Coming up, we will hear how Polish retailer CCC is leveraging data and AI to drive more impactful marketing campaigns within their organization. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for joining us today. More and more businesses are looking to leverage their data assets, both past and present, to inform decisions that help them achieve their ongoing goals. That's right. And with the size of this data growing on a daily basis, finding ways to not only process, but also interpret these insights in real time requires a combination of skills from both data engineers and also data scientists. Today, we are joined by CCC Group, who will share how they are making the most of their data estate by bringing these teams together. CCC Group is one of the largest European companies in the footwear sector. They have approximately 90 e-commerce platforms and 950 stores spread across 28 countries. With brands like Io Bouvier, Mondivo and DZ. Now from May 2021, the company also developed sales in their off-price segment through a half-price chain of stores. They have a mission to unlock fashion for everybody everywhere. From running their omni-channel model all the way through to planning new collections, the Microsoft Cloud is key to enabling their teams to do more with less. Joining us today are Marta Prewish Quinto, Data Engineering Team Lead, and Alexandra Rolowicz, Data Science Team Lead. Marta, Alexandra, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Marta, I'd like to start with you. Now, CCC Group has been running on Azure for a number of years now. Can you take us through why Azure was chosen as your cloud platform and how your system has matured over the years? We started with a small system to support communication to a group of customers uh, covered by the loyalty program, the CCC Club. At this stage, we perform only simple analysis based on a few basic queries. But over time, business needs grew. It required more our support by providing new solutions based on more and more advanced analytics. We have chosen Azure because we knew that uh, we will be able to achieve scalability and flexibility with our roadmap solution. We really appreciate the direct technical support from Microsoft. Uh, we are up to date with the solution roadmap, so it helps us make a better arch architectural decisions. We can avoid solutions that are immature despite their fancy appearance. Currently, multiple of our data products run on Azure. The most developed one is a data platform, which allows you to create customer segments uh, regarding lo loyalty platform. Uh, it also allows you to measure the campaign effectiveness and get some insights about sales and products based on our transactional data and uh, data from even touch points. Now, CCC Group represents a number of stores around Europe. Can you maybe take us through how you dealt with bringing in those disparate data sources and, and rationalizing them into a single data warehouse? I will start with the sources. Our main challenge was to collect all data from all the organization and we have to find people responsible for data we are looking for. The most important uh, source is our data warehouse that collects transactional data from multiple systems. We utilize only a part of the information and reach them with unstructured data from other systems. For instance, we are able to consume real-time data from other sources to provide more detailed information. Our extract transform load is taking place on Azure Data Factory and Databricks. To integrate with multiple sources, we are using a few connectors from Data Factory like Oracle Connector, SharePoint Collector, or SQL Server Connector, and from Databricks like JDBC Connector. Next layer, data model and transformation, is taking place on data lake storage and hyperscale database. Currently, we are working on a data distribution between uh, data lake storage and database, so we could offload the database. Machine learning layer is built on Databricks. Thanks to this solution, we are able to address more advanced analytics needs and can model data in a way that is not possible with simple SQL queries. All the technology we have chosen allow us to treat data as a product. 
Our clients are data scientists, people using uh, reports or APAs from the of other systems. For example, in the Power BI layer, we present aggregates in reports. It is so great to see how all of this comes together. And I think one thing that stuck out with me is really starting with the data source. It really goes to show that the quality of data going in is just as important as all of the other layers, if not more. So with that, that is only one half of the story. Alexandra, can you share how the data science team takes advantage of this data once it's been processed? Since data comes from various systems and refers to various data domains, we can combine this data and build the data maps that are used in advanced analytics. Our the most developed model factories in our CRM campaigns that are dedicated for CCC loyalty program. We know that through personalization, we can leverage our potential. So we have to be sure that every single customer has the right communication through the right channel and the right time. To better understand customer needs, we are analyzing data through customer 360 view that is organized in customer-centric way. It means that we go through transactional behavior and products and needs and returns and complaints, demography and CRM. The customer data mart has the around 3,000 features and thanks to that, this, we can build a simple recommender that is used in direct to customer campaigns. This is really impressive. And, and once, you, once you process that data, how do you share those insights back to the business and get the actions you're looking for? In fact, business doesn't need multiple models uh, that can easily lead to feel overwhelmed or advanced model metrics that are not clearly understandable. It's not uh, truly recommended, it's just a half of the process. And if we stop at the step without caring of the end-to-end -end process, we cannot truly take advantage of data science. The campaign team needs uh, the answer of simple questions. What the, is the best subset of clients to uh, communicate in particular product campaign? What is the best product? to offer particular client. What kind of offer and through which channel we have to set up the campaign to use the whole potential or when and how frequent we should communicate clients to be the most effective. For these scenarios, we serve the simple answers through marketing automation. The campaign team can either set up the campaign, triggered campaign, or just simply can use the answers and build the customer segment in standard campaigns. Thank you so much for sharing. This visual shows how this data can not only help simplify processes, but provide real-time actionable insights throughout the business. Now, shifting gears, Marta, can you share what steps you've taken to ensure good data quality and any steps you wish you had taken sooner? Data quality is an input data problem, which we monitor constantly. However, it is a bigger challenge concerning the company. It is an organizational challenge, not a technical one. So data governance initiative is being implemented. It will help us maintain greater data awareness and ensure data quality. Except that we are also implementing good practices like policies for Databricks clusters, so we could control our Azure costs. We have a continuous process of monitoring and optimizing costs to keep them under control. We are trying our best to keep all good practices about security policies. We are using Azure Active Directory everywhere we can, from hyperscale database to Databricks by using the system for cross-domain identity management. And we try to stick to the rule principle of least privilege. One must not forget how important implementation of continuous de integration and delivery is. Uh, the development and testing environment uh, is the foundation of this process. Every change should be recorded in repositories so we can go back in time before the change uh, in the release uh, be have been done. If something wrong happened, they are the basic of software engineering. Uh, but in current world, when we run so fast with features, it's easy to forget. We have to find a compromise between business needs, time of delivery, 
uh, and the correctness of the solution. Some great learnings there, and I love how you know really focusing on the quality of that data and getting that into the system was where you started, and that's a, a great approach to take. Shifting gears to the ML side, Alexandra, what are some of the lessons you would share with others who are looking to use Databricks? The most important thing good to remember is to do small steps and create MVP through the business life cycle and through achieving analytical maturity by the organization. Try to adjust and scale when time passes, step by step. It seems, simply gives an opportunity to continuously learn the business and to understand how things work in real life. On the other hand, by making small, no rush steps, we gain some time to teach the business the advantages of using ML tools and to teach the whole team how to use it in the production. The other thing worth to remember is to begin with a valuation metric, preferably financial metric that shows actual impact on our action on business. In terms of CRM campaigns, to measure ROI of our solution, we calculate and monitor a few campaign effectiveness metrics. Some great insight there. I love the way you took small steps while you were learning the business and really took an iterative approach there. And also the focus on getting the right metric to make sure you're having the impact on the business that you wanted. Marta, Alexandra, thank you so much for taking the time today. It's been great to hear your story. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. I really loved everything that Marta and Alexandra had to share. The one thing that really stood out to me is how the insights from this data can have an impact across the whole business. I also loved how they focused on optimizing costs within Azure along the way. That's right. I also love how they really kind of focused on taking advantage of things in the retail industry and taking advantage of that scale with Azure and optimizing their costs for the peaks and troughs of the business. Also, the way they took an iterative approach to their machine learning and found that those small steps really did have big impacts in the business as they were refining the machine learning models. That's right. And this is all underpinned by having great communication across the business and making sure that the data going into the model is high quality. Now, if you want to learn how you can get started with Azure Data Lake or Databricks, you can head to microsoft.com slash learn to get started. Be sure to tune in next time when we will go deeper with CCC and their business intelligence team to see how they are leveraging this data further in the business with Power BI and Power Apps. And make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. To do this, you can head over to aka.ms slash customer tech talks to subscribe. Now, we're always looking for new stories to tell and new learnings to share. So if you feel you'd like to be part of the program, you can reach out to us at cttalk at microsoft.com to get started. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next Customer Tech Talks.